Today's video we showcase all of the German tanks in World of Tanks console. We're going to be doing a full tech tree review so you guys know every single tank in the German line from tier 5 and onwards and how you can play them, the sort of the good, the bad, the ugly, the tanks you want to avoid and we'll get right into it now starting with the German light tanks. So the German light tanks start off with the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen or at least that's the tank that you want to be getting towards and so you start at the Leopard. So the Leopard is a tier 5 light tank that is kind of a bit boxy. It's very much like the Lux which is the tank that you played previously um, and it has no real kind of superb attributes to this vehicle. You pretty much have everything that Lux had but with slightly better penetration and damage essentially and that is literally it. Um, you have a little bit of armor comparatively to a lot of the other light tanks that you're going to be able to play at this tier and so yeah generally it's a pretty decent one. And this continues up to the tier 6 which is the VK2801 and the VK2801 is a really really interesting vehicle. I really really enjoyed this vehicle because it has this super fast firing gun that you can do a lot of damage in in quite a short period of time whilst also being able to use view range to your advantage. Having 380 meters base view range at tier 6 is pretty nice and that allows you to in tier 8 games be very very competitive in terms of the view range fight that you're going to be dealing with uh, when it comes to other light tanks that you may be coming up against and remember the armor viewer as the previous one is actually not useless but you're probably not going to bounce very many rounds with this thing but overall a very very nice tank indeed and of course it's very fast as well and in fact I believe I three marked it by the looks of things so yeah I must have really really enjoyed this vehicle and I can remember definitely having a ton of fun and that is because uh, it was just basically hitting on the move everywhere with all of the accuracy perks I think I probably used the smaller gun for the increased accuracy but it's completely down to you how you want to play this vehicle um, but I genuinely think that it's one of the best um, kind of best tier 6 uh, light tanks in the game right now. Then you move on to the SP1C uh, which is the SPIC. Uh, this vehicle I definitely enjoyed if you've played the uh, the Tiger Shark or if you've played um, the he Trailblazer I think it is. They're basically two tanks that were released as part of World of Tanks Hot Wheels and they essentially were premium versions at tier 8 of the SPIC and the SPIC is um, a tank that doesn't get the autoloader, the Tiger Shark definitely does which makes the Tiger Shark better hence why it's tier 8 but this vehicle and much like the previous one um, has kind of everything you, that you kind of really need as a light tank but in all intents and purposes you're a lot slower with this vehicle the top forward speed is 58 kilometers an hour compared to the 68 that you had previously um, DPM is nothing spectacular but it's definitely usable and that's kind of what keeps this vehicle actually being able to play and then you get this 19mm uh, that's really really nice to use um, a decent view range as well and so generally it's kind of one of the weaker light tanks if you aren't used to playing kind of damage dealing light tanks in World of Tanks so if you're after a true kind of agile nimble tank then the SP1C is probably not for you um, and that's pretty much the same as you go through the entire tech tree line as you get further and further on they become kind of less nimble and easier to hit they're big targets but as you then move on you get the HW12 and the HW12 is a vehicle um, that I actually have in the garage uh, we managed to keep it really really found this tank actually pretty surprisingly good because it has kind of things that you'd not expect from a light tank and that is the um, the main armament is fantastic as with all of the German main armaments you find that the 90 millimeters are fantastic the 8.8 millimeters are amazing um, or 8.8 centimeters I should say the 88s um, and you just have everything that you need as a light tank and that is why this tank um, I feel like is very very competitive you've also got good penetration you've got heat rounds the speed gets increased over the spick which makes it usable again um, you are a bit prone to flying over or falling over or collapsing or whatever you want to call it rolling over um, because of the kind of small uh, width of tracks between them both 
and that means making a sharp turn can end up you rolling around on your roof um, but yeah it makes it very good fun and that's ultimately what you want from a, a tank in World of Tanks is actually have fun and that is where I think the HWK12 is definitely one of those uh, that can actually provide that in the game and then that quickly leads on to the Spa Panzer or the RU251 and this RU251 is a vehicle that I think gets kind of shoved in the back it's like a hybrid between a medium and a light tank and that is really where I've really enjoyed playing this tank because uh, for me personally my playstyle is pretty aggressive light tank I like being a damage dealer whilst also being able to provide view range which is where the spot panzer comes in really really nicely because you have this really really consistent main armament in the 90 millimeter that you've got used to from the previous two tanks and you also get the view range advantage that a tier 9 light tanks provide along with the fact that you can now go 70 kilometers an hour so it's much faster and it maintains the speed really really well uh, you can also then improve your accuracy and basically make this tank a real uh, true light tank in the sense of moving around and just being a nuisance so I really really think that this tank is amazing obviously we have reviewed the RU251 in a light tank video just showcasing how you can uh, play light tanks before so you can always go back and try and find that on the channel so yeah I highly recommend that and then this tank then leads on to a tank that I don't actually own on this account um, but it is the Rheinmetall Panzerwagen and this is probably one of the weaker tier 10 light tanks in water tanks console and that is because yes it has the kind of attributes that you'd want from a light tank I'm sure you can make it work I'm not saying that because it's one of the worst light tanks yeah, at tier 10 that it can't be played it's just one of those that it's very boxy it's a very large tank um, which means that basically you get hit all of the time in this thing if you do get spotted um, the view range to steel concealment is nothing spectacular so there's no real advantage there 75 kilometers an hour is very nice and you can definitely use that uh, to your advantage especially if you were to put the speed boost equipment making this thing one of the fastest light tanks in the game um, but overall it just feels a little bit lackluster i feel so there's kind of that do you definitely have some problems with the hit points that you have in this vehicle because you will get one shot by uh, fe 4005 and fe 215b 183s which is not very nice um but overall just a very mediocre light tank in general and of course you can l see that by the win rate of this vehicle overall i think it's one of the lowest i think it's like 47 percent in the game which i'm not surprised that because light tanks are typically harder for most players and um the, yeah they can be definitely difficult when you're in a massive light tank that primarily acts almost like a really fast medium that can spot a little bit better so yeah it's a very unique kind of gameplay style but without further ado we'll then move on to the medium tank lines which lead on to the leopard one now the leopard one you can get from playing the spic uh, because it then leads on to the indian panzer and that's actually the route that i went down uh, but i highly recommend you play through the um, tier 5 all the way up to tier 10 uh, using the traditional tanks which come in the form of the panzer 34 now the panzer 34 is your average tier 5 medium doesn't really have that much armor has a little bit of spaced armor on the side you can bounce a few rounds uh, but it has this really nice uh, kind of gun as you can probably expect from all of the German tanks in the game because it has 110 damage 110 pen more than enough to go through most of the tier fives in the game and it will be a really really fun one um, I feel like because you've got a little bit of speed you've got a little bit of armor it's basically a good all-rounder and that is kind of the uh, typical tanks within the German medium tank line and then it leads on to the VKD and this is actually a tank that uh, is very underrated and it actually is very very solid in terms of how it plays because much like the previous tank has armor has a little bit of speed in fact this tank goes even faster so when you talk about the, like, the light tanks and the medium tanks, they're kind of like a mishmash. Like this vehicle can go 60 kilometers an hour top speed, um, which makes this medium tank very, very nice for uh, A, ramming, if you're coming up against light tanks and stuff like that. And it also means that you can keep up with a lot of the other vehicles. Uh, you can out traverse people. Yeah, you've also got fairly okay view range. Nothing like a light tank's view range, but it's comparable to light tanks. And that makes what I really, really did enjoy about playing um, some of these tanks and I have played them on alternative accounts so 
yes, th they may not be unlocked here, but trust me, I've played through them. They're really, really nice to play. And then you move on to the tier seven. This is probably... Uh, I'd say a little bit less uh, kind of rewarding than the tier 6, uh, but it's still a very good tank. Um, I don't think that anyone's going to have be having some uh, uber stellar amazing gameplays in these vehicles because they're not typically uh, the highest damage dealers, although you can get 105 millimeter or 10.5 centimeter, which would be nice. I think that's 320 alpha. Um, so, I mean, there's that. And then, of course, the top gun being the 8.8 .8 centimeter, where you get 220 alpha, I believe, on this. Um, but you have to double check that yourself. But yes you get the alpha advantage makes it a little bit more competitive at this tier uh, which is definitely a good thing and that's kind of uh, what that tank is it's just a little bit of armor a little bit of speed very nice gun overall pretty okay and then it leads on to the indian panzer now the indian panzer is one of my favorite tanks uh, or medium tanks that i've played at tier a and it's kind of strange because I never thought the Indian Panzer would ever be anywhere near as good as it actually is. And that's because it has some really, really kind of weird armor. Uh, it can bounce a few rounds, surprisingly, because you've got uh, essentially this weird shaped turret. Now, don't get me wrong, tier 10s will pen you through the turret pretty much everywhere, even through the mantlet. Sometimes they can pen you. So don't go expecting any rounds like that. But because of the shape, they can auto ricochet off of your turret quite Quite easily and because the hull armor is a weird shape as well people can underestimate the angling of it and they can end up bouncing off of it as well but remember just because the armor is maybe a bit troll it doesn't mean the tank is always good but with this vehicle because it's got the speed because it has the main armament that you're seeing here and because it's got buffed recently it's able to do some things that maybe some of the other tier 8 mediums cannot do and that's because it has 0.32 accuracy 280 alpha damage 200 millimeters of penetration and it also gets some really really good statistics overall the nine centimeter german tank gun is amazing as well and um, is genuinely one of the uh, nicest kind of uh, armaments that you can get at tier 8 uh, for any kind of tank. From the Indian Panzer then you then reach the Leopard Prototype or the Leopard PTA and this is a vehicle that is quite possibly a better tier for tier tank than the tier 10 equivalent the Leopard 1. Now the Leopard PTA obviously comes up against tier 7s like Tigers and because of that it has an amazing uh, kind of damage per minute because you get this top gun with 390 alpha damage it's the first gun in this tech tree line that allows you to do that and that means that because you've got 390 you can come up against a lot of the heavy tanks at this tier and the lower tiers and you can actually trade with them now I'm not suggesting ever that you should trade a leper PTA with a heavy tank because Typically, medium tanks shouldn't be doing that anyway. You should be a support tank. You should be basically supporting your team, pulling around corners, dealing your damage as and when you can. Uh, but if you come into the situation where you need to take a hit from a heavy tank, it doesn't feel like such a, uh, a kind of annoying thing because you're whacking out this pretty much the same amount of damage back to them. Albeit, you know, sometimes you come up against things like the E100, which have double your damage. But regardless, an amazing tank, really great accuracy, really good mobility, really good view range, and in general, I think this is probably one of the better tanks um, a tier for tier at tier 9 and in terms of the medium. So yeah, I really do think that this is great. And then it leads on to the Leopard 1. Of course, the Leopard 1 just basically being a better version of the Leopard PTA, although it doesn't really get that much benefit. It gets a little bit more view range, gets a little bit higher top speed, um, kind of a slightly lower still concealment, so it's actually worse. Um, but yeah, you've just got a more consistent gun as well. So overall, Leopard 1, really, really fantastic medium. Um, is it the best medium But in the game? Probably not, no. But it is definitely up there, especially if you are a more experienced player at World of Tanks, you can make the Leopard 1 really work um, comparatively to something like the E50M, which might be slightly friendlier for the newer player. 
Now then, talking about the E50M, what actually leads to this vehicle? Well, you should start down at tier five with the VK301H. And this vehicle, much like the kind of pre predecessors, has a little bit of armor. And that is kind of where it goes down because this leads on to the heavy tanks as well. So you start off with this kind of medium slash heavy tank kind of hybrid tank that then splits off into the two different classes and that's really where the VK comes in and that's because um, you know you've got to give some sort of opportunity for players to learn the various different mechanics that you're going to have uh, with them being armor and also view range and the kind of a, a bit of a mashup really um, and this is a great tank to kind of uh, to kick it off with so once you fully upgraded, you get a 10.5 centimeter, which people do use. You basically have to fire exclusive premium in it, though, um, because, yeah, you just get terrible pen. Um, but then once you fully upgraded, you can then get the 7.5 centimeter, which gets a very uh, consistent uh, alpha damage gun, 110 damage, 100 penetration. It's basically the same gun that you've got on a lot of the other tier 5 and tier 6 tanks. And, yeah, generally pretty good. And then, of course, you can get the top gun on it. Uh, which is the seven and a half, five point five centimeter Waffer gun, which may even be an not an auto loader, I don't think, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. Um, I don't think that this tank is overall that OP or anything like that, but it's uh, definitely consistent, and you can have some good games. Um, you probably shouldn't be expecting all too much from it, um, but really where it kicks off is at the VKM, which is where it leads onto from the medium line. Now, the VKM, yeah, this is a vehicle that kind of gets you right into the medium tank, uh, well, the heavily armoured medium tank playstyle that the German line offers, leading up to the infamous Panther, and the VKM has uh, a little bit of speed. You can see 55 kilometers an hour. I recently played this vehicle because I was interested in getting myself the E50M on console so I can showcase what it's actually like. Um, but in general, a really, really fast, speedy, nice tank that I feel like you guys are going to really enjoy if you do decide to actually go down this route. And in fact, tier for tier is probably one of the nicer mediums in the game because you've got the view range you've got the uh, alpha damage you've got 150 penetration which is nice on your standard rounds 135 damage which makes it one of the higher alpha damage mediums in tier 6 even though you know 135 may not seem that much uh, kind of pale in comparison to some of the t34 88s and uh, t34 85 but still very very good and it means that you can uh, pinpoint locate a lot of the uh, kind of weak points of the heavy Heavy tanks and it's good for you to learn all of the different weak points so I really highly recommend you guys go down this route uh, to kind of learn some how to kind of be accurate and the German tech tree in general is a good uh, kind of way of learning various different weak points and being able to uh, be a lot more accurate without having to whine about the fact that uh, your accuracy is terrible so Without further ado, we then lead on to the Panther. And the Panther is the tier 7 heavily armoured medium. And of course, if you know anything about tanks, this is a pretty famous one. And there is uh, a reason for that. And that was because it was a fairly solid vehicle at the time during World War II. And that's because it featured the 8.8 centimetre, uh, or the 7.5 centimetre, sorry, um, which was really, really nice. And then, of course, you get the premium version, which is the Panther 88, which was the gun that kind of really kicked it all off um, back in the day, because it would just rip through literally everything it came up against. But on this vehicle you get the seven and a half and also you can get a ten and a half but the ten and a half is terrible and i wouldn't really ever recommend it because yes you get 410 alpha damage uh, but the penetration is absolutely useless so you're not going to pen anything and the accuracy is terrible and you'd much rather be f a hell of a lot more consistent um so yeah that's kind of what i've gone with a view range pretty decent if you've got a coated optics um, or at least advanced optics and you've got some of the perks as well um, and if you're using vents and uh, the gun rammer you can make this tank into a pretty much a beast i really really did enjoy playing this vehicle and of course uh, you should definitely use it uh, if you're interested in any historically accurate tanks and of course that then leads on to the panther 2 which is the vehicle uh, that's kind of next on the tech tree line and that leads on to the e50 now the panther 2 is where they start introducing the 8.8 .8, i believe so this is where you get the 8.8 .8 centimeter this is where you get the traditional uh, kind of panther that really uh, kicked it all off so 
the Panther 2, much like the Panther, also gets a decent chunky uh, amount of armor. Obviously, you can side scrape with this thing uh, because of the uh, kind of decent side armor. I think you get like 60 millimeters. So, you know, you can uh, kind of come out from a building. You can try and bounce a few rounds. Um, the armor isn't great. I'm not going to lie if you're coming frontally because people will pen you through the upper plate. Um, but that's where you kind of got to wiggle. You just got to make it a little bit difficult. And of course, you can consistently hit them back with the 8.8 uh, centimeter with 240 alpha so yeah that's kind of how you can go along um of course if you've played any of these vehicles and you kind of differ in your opinion well, of course let me know in the comment section down below but uh then we move on to the e50 now the e50 is known for its ramming capability and that's because it's fast at 60 kilometers an hour it also has this chunky uh, kind of hull and it also weighs 50 tons I believe I think that's how the German tanks actually were named I don't know if they give us the weight of the tank they might do um, but yeah they give us the uh, horsepower to ton ratio so 870 horsepower yeah probably like 50 tons so I would expect that that's about what it is um, hence why it's called E50 but nonetheless this vehicle gets a really really nice uh, top gun with the 105 which gives you 320 alpha and it's also uh, very very consistent it is a premium spamming tank though I believe from what I can remember um, but the E50 is a vehicle uh, that can definitely perform quite well armor model definitely bounces a few rounds if people don't pay attention um, turret armor obviously this is the uh, kind of stock turret but as you get the turret upgraded i believe it actually got upgraded by wargaming themselves making it a hell of a lot better uh, so you will be bouncing a lot more in this thing and generally i think it's a pretty solid medium tank at tier 9 is it going to be outrageous no uh, does it lack gun depression yes although eight degrees but remember as with all of the german tanks like this they're pretty high profile but also a bit limited in which they get like their effective gun depression because they're so long and they're so wide that if you go over a little bump it can make a massive different uh, impact on how low you can uh, depress your barrel so you have to think about that as well when it comes to gun depression if you were in for example the m56 scorpion although it has a lot uh, kind of very good gun depression it gets even more effective because it's so small that it doesn't get affected by the terrain as much as you would in something like I don't know a, a bison or something like that the t103 um, so yeah you can kind of imagine how that works but then you also lead on to the e50m this is the ramming boy of world of tanks console or at least the traditional ramming boy there are alternatives at this point but the E50M, 60 kilometers an hour, weighs 50 tons. Um, yeah, very, very good, very solid. Definitely need some premium rounds, although they did buff them recently. Um, so yeah, generally a very, very good tank. Should I recommend it for new players? Probably not. I would rather you go towards the E100 because I feel like it's a little bit easier on the new players. But nonetheless, we go all the way back down to tier 6 leading on from the VK301H and then we lead on to the VK3601H which is a vehicle that is a very very solid heavy tank and in fact it's because of the fact it gets the 8.8 centimeter with 240 alpha at tier 6 that it punishes it seriously punishes especially if you are using it to poke against opponents and just do that sort of thing um decent view range for a heavy tank in general an amazing tank and that is kind of uh, how the tanks typically go in the german line there's no real absolute stinkers um well you'll see in a minute that there are some absolute stinkers but they're typically are just one line um but the vk3601h really really good uh, generally i think most people enjoy this tank when they go through it so there's no complaints there then of course leading on to quite possibly the most famous tank in the world the tiger one and that is because this vehicle was the king or at least one of the kings um, of world war ii so the tiger one really really amazing tank in the game um, because of the consistency am i saying that it's outrageous am i saying it's the best tier 7 heavy no but it can be really really good because it has 240 alpha has a superb reload has a little bit of armor although in today's meta you do get penned by pretty much everything and because it's so flat you get penned by everything but 
either way view range of it the actual uh, kind of mobility of it generally just a really really good tank and then that leads on to one of my most favored tier 8 heavy tanks the tiger 2 and that's because with all of the perks it gets really really good view range for a heavy tank it gets a superb main armament 320 alpha and it is so consistent because it's so accurate that you got 0.24 accuracy on a heavy tank yes a heavy tank which means that you if you're good at aiming if you want to learn how to aim this vehicle is really really good it's also very easy to play because uh, you do have a little bit of armor the turret got buffed recently and in general uh, I think that this vehicle is probably one of the strongest tier 8 heavies in the game at the moment uh, of course that could all change depending on when you actually watch this video if you're watching five years into the future for some reason and World of Tanks console is still going then yes this uh, this vehicle was good at one point it may not be when you're watching but yes I think that in general with the vertical stabilizers with advanced optics and advanced loader the typical setup that you want in the German heavy tanks um, you're really going to have a good time and yeah just this has got to be one of my favorites um, especially on the German tech tree line in general as well so moving on from the Tiger we then go to another superb German heavy tank the E75 and you can see hence why a three mark this thing that the E75 is a great tank now we haven't actually got it on the actual game I should probably rebuy this vehicle um, in fact I'll do that now because why not but E75 what does it offer it's basically a big daddy version of the T King Tiger so if you enjoyed the King Tiger or you're currently grinding towards them then I'm sure that you'll really enjoy uh, playing this vehicle as well so we will basically see that this vehicle has uh, slightly increased alpha damage because it has now a 12 and a half centimeter um, which is where I believe uh, most people um, find this tank to be amazing because it has that 12 and a half centimeter because it has um, basically the increased alpha and because it has a decent amount of armor such that you can actually bounce a few rounds and you can see here in the appearance right now uh, the well the armor viewer even the armor model that you have with this vehicle it is very very angled it means that you can bounce a few rounds you can angle your tank you can just be a nuisance to the opponents you've got 490 alpha at tier 9 which makes this one of the highest alpha damage uh, tanks at the tier and it also has a pretty decent reload considering it does have 490 alpha meaning that you get an average dpm of 1900 now that's maybe one of the lower end but still really 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 good and i cannot iterate how good this tank actually feels in game of course you can reduce uh, or increase the advanced loader using this and in fact we might do a video on this vehicle coming very very soon and that basically tells you enough about what i think of the e75 why i think it's so great and of course it's just basically an upgraded version of the king tiger which is in itself an amazing tank anyway then it leads on to the big boy the e100 now the e100 is much like the previous tanks uh, reliant on its armor model or it tries to rely on its armor model but of course e100's big lower plate is the key weak point um, but the e100 in general has the 750 alpha also gets this other alternative gun that you can use uh, which has i believe 490 alpha so you've got that as well so you can choose between the two obviously the 490 has better accuracy and better dpm um, but you suffer the kind of consequences of if you come up against tds that have high alpha then you can't trade one for one with them um, so yeah it's kind of uh, a bit of a kind of mix up can you deal with having slightly lower alpha damage with this vehicle but nonetheless a superb tier 10 and probably one of the easiest ones that people can learn and just have an enjoyable time in and i've always enjoyed the e100 quite a lot so yeah i find it one of the better tier 10 heavy tanks for new players for an experienced player it might be a little bit boring because of the speed um, and so you're not really going to be getting anywhere anytime soon now then if you did enjoy the e100 or you've played through the e100 let's look at the alternative heavy tanks that you can play 
at tier 5 and that is the Panzer 4H and this is probably the better tier 5 out of the two that you can play for the heavy tanks um, and that's because it gets the 105 centimeter uh, that is actually pretty okay um, it also gets this other gun uh, that you can see you know, 0.39 accuracy I think this actually got buffed recently um, and that leads on to uh, the VKP so very much like the previous all of these low tier Germans are basically the same sort of tank. They have the big lower plates. They have a big flat bar at the front, which you can pen. Um, and yeah, I think that there's nothing really too spectacular to say about them. Um, you can tell that these vehicles when fully upgraded have quite a lot of differences um, between how they play but the lower tiers are pretty much exactly the same they have these seven and a half centimeters that just do 110 alpha damage and pretty good rate of fire. And then that leads on to one of the more interesting ones. Um, you can either go to the Tiger 1 or the Tiger P. Obviously, we'll be going to the Tiger P for the sake of this video to showcase uh, the tier 10s. But the Tiger P. This was one of the worst tanks I think I've ever played at tier 7 uh, when it was uh, not buffed. It was absolutely useless because when you think about it, you've got a Tiger that's fast that has the same gun um, it basically can maneuver itself and then you get the Tiger P which is supposed to have armor and so it loses a lot of the extra things that the Tiger 1 has um, and in real life the Tiger P was the Tiger Porsche um, you also had the Hangshaw Tiger which I believe um, was the uh, actual Tiger 1 that was released the Tiger P was by Porsche which had a hydro uh, electric engine I believe which basically just broke down all of the time so that's why they never made it um, and actually this hull armor of the Tiger P then get, went in to make the Ferdinand which is a tank that you can see here um, yeah so it basically has the same hull armor uh, because they basically didn't want to uh, they wanted to re replace it um, but the Tiger P as with in real life it's probably the weaker of the two and you're just not going to have that much fun i hated it especially stock the tiger p stock is horrific you're going to struggle so hard with this vehicle um especially if you're a new player oh god it's horrible but don't worry because as you get further on in the line it gets a little bit less bad um, and that's because you get the VKA and the VKA was an amazing really underrated tank that I was not actually expecting to be good it is good um, the tank basically features a 320 alpha damage gun when you get it fully upgraded um, and uh, well 240 I think you could choose a, a 320 I think I went with the 320 gun throughout um, and it made it really really fun to use um, super super good it's very much like a medium heavy tank kind of hybrid playstyle. So yeah, you can just use it like that. And then you've also then lead on to the VKB, which is where I'm currently at. And the VKB is just <laughs> the VKB is just terrible. Um, it has this kind of weird armor model where you've got a rear mounted turret, which is where, you know, the turret is placed at the rear of the vehicle. No surprises there for what it means. But Essentially what this vehicle has is that it primarily focuses on the fact that this tank has really amazing uh, frontal armor and that is in quotation marks because the frontal armor can be penned by pretty much everyone uh, through the lower plate if they get it with premium rounds. So basically it's a vehicle that is supposed to be good against people who fire standard rounds but remember everyone fires premium rounds on world of tanks console at this point and so yeah you just get peppered with shells left right and center in a tank that is sacrifices pretty much everything to have the frontal armor that cannot be penetrated except from by everyone with premium rounds so you can imagine what that tank is like um obviously as you get it fully upgraded the turret armor does actually get pretty good um and that is where you really want to get the turret armor super super quickly because without it uh, the turret sucks it really does suck and so not only do you have the big lower plate that everyone pens and the side armor that everyone pens you also get a turret that everyone pens as well so yeah not very nice uh, at all so really really um kind of it's bad. It's just bad. I don't think that anyone's going to call it super, super good. It's probably average when fully upgraded and bad, very bad when actual stock. So yeah, no one really cares too much about that vehicle. But then you lead on to the Panzer 7, which is the uh, King Lerva for those of you that don't know. And the King Lerva is basically 
as as we say a lover but just fully upgraded um, and this vehicle is not particularly amazing now people can use it very well and I'm not saying that you can't um, but the key thing about the vehicle is that it relies upon much like the previous its armor model but there are some key weak points which are the uh, bottom of the turret there's kind of like this circular area it'd be so much easier if i had a mouse to show it to you but essentially there's the left and right of the hull armor um you can see that there's like a little flat rounded section on the bottom um that basically can be penned by everyone uh, you've got also uh, then the mantlet that i believe people can pen as well so there's always that then you've got a capola that people can pen and yes when face hugging people it can be difficult for them to deal with you but uh, if they ever get around the side of you it's just game over and also um, just in general I think that because of the speed it's not very fast which means it can be a little bit annoying for more experienced players that just want to move around the map pretty quickly and just be influential and this tank can definitely suffer from that as well as having pretty bad accuracy as well um, just yeah, I don't think that it's a very competitive tier 10. Um, then, of course, let's get back to the VK101P, which is the tier 8 heavy or super heavy tank that leads on to the famous mouse. Um, and the VK1001P, much like its VKB counterpart, is absolutely useless when it comes to its armor model because everyone pens you in the lower plate everyone pens you through the side people pen you in that massive cupola that's on top of your vehicle um and if you come up against tier 10s they pen you through the turret because why not and of course um you're super super slow 23 kilometers an hour top speed i believe it does go up with the engine upgrade no it doesn't you just basically can keep it more consistent uh, but you do get a 440 alpha so there's always that as a bonus uh, you can see i obviously purchased the vehicle and then sold it again so yeah maybe i'll buy it back uh, right now just so that we've got it for future reference and i'm definitely going to go towards the mouse at some point it's just a case of prioritizing some other lines at the moment so there you go the vk 1001p not particularly great probably gonna want to tear your hair out when playing it and then we lead on to probably an even worse version the Maotian which is literally the exact same except everyone can pen your turret much like the Maus because they load premium and they just go through the uh, kind of angled turret armor that basically because it's rounded whichever way or whichever direction above or below the motion they can basically get a flat area of it so yeah you can basically go through the front of the motion along with that big flat german lower plate which everyone pens as well and then the side arm is trash so yeah you get penned through that and then the capola on top of the tank as well is a nice big shoot me here point so yes the tank suffers much like the vkp probably worse because you're in tier 10 because everyone plays tier 10 against this vehicle because tier 9s are basically tier 10 matchmaking and of course uh, you do get 490 alpha so it makes it a little bit less uh, bad to play but stock this thing is horrendous from what i've heard from a lot of people and don't worry because when you finally get to the mouse it's kind of the same story yes you probably can bounce a little bit more comparatively because the lower plate of the mouse is a little bit better um but yeah overall very much the same sort of story pretty consistent gun can definitely be used very well by a few people and if you do get into a side scraping position it can be working very well for you but yeah the opportunities to do that are few and far between and because of the turret people when you pull out uh, and they know what they're doing they'll just shoot at your turret when you expose that uh, rather than the side armor because they can pen the turret far easier especially with premium ammunition uh, than they will try and shoot your turret but nonetheless let's jump down to the last few tanks in the game of course i say few there's five other tier 10s to review but we've then got down to the german tank destroyers which come in the stug 3g now the stug i think it's fairly consistent i believe it gets a little bit of a derp um of course when you get the uh i think it's seven and a half centimeter it's kind of interesting it doesn't get a derp actually but it's nothing too spectacular it's a german tank destroyer that has low alpha and relies upon being undetected which it definitely does it's got kind of a bit of speed and so yeah overall a pretty solid tank destroyer but 
Then you move on to the Jagdpanzer IV, and this is a completely different story. The Jagdpanzer IV is amazing, um, and that's because it gets its 8.8 centimeter with 220 alpha damage, and you can basically stay hidden for the entire game and just rinse opponents that decide to come towards you and so in general an amazing uh, tier 6 so I highly recommend you actually try out these German TDs and of course it then leads on to the J Panther now the J Panther is a vehicle that I've always enjoyed I think it's um, pretty solid gets a little bit of armor it recently got buffed as well it also gets this uh, super super good 10 and a half centimeter with 320 alpha which i'd rather use over the 240 alpha 8.8 centimeter that you get um it's really really fast as well so that's kind of one interesting bit um and the j panther very very good um do I think it's OP? No, but it's definitely usable. Um, and that leads on to the Ferdinand as well. Now, considering we spoke about the Ferdinand and it also comes off of the Tiger P, obviously, because in real life it actually used the T Tiger P chassis. Um, but in general, the Ferdinand sucks comparatively to the Yag Panther 2. That's because... Once again, Wargaming is traditional, let's give it armour and then everyone won't be able to pen it except everyone pens it and we'll reduce all of the other characteristics of the vehicle to kind of counteract the fact that we've given it armour in quotation marks. So yes, you sacrifice pretty much everything in terms of mobility, accuracy, um, just general just being able to enjoy world of tanks to be able to play the ferdinand um and yeah and then you get the ag tiger at the end of it once you've ground out hundreds of battles trying to throw your head against brick wall but if you do decide to go the better route which is almost everyone's route um towards the yeguru and that's the Jag Panther 2. This vehicle, much like the Jag Panther, is super fast. 55 kilometers an hour. It has 490 alpha. It has 311 premium penetration. Means you can basically come up against tier 10s and be fine. Uh, really good vision. I love the Jag Panther 2. And it is one of uh, my favorite TDs for the Tetri version. Um, yeah, really, 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 really good. Um, always enjoyable to play. That then leads on to the Jag Tiger, which is a vehicle that is pretty consistent. If you played the Jag Tiger 88, the premium tier 8 version that was released for free not that long ago, then you'll know exactly what the Jag Tiger can do. Um, that is a tier 8 version. This is, of course, the Big Daddy, which gets 560 alpha and really, really good DPM. Um, obviously, that can get boosted and it actually has a little bit of armor. You can see here. It can bounce a few. It actually got buffed armor recently, um, as with all of the German tank destroyers. So you can try and actually bounce a few, but as with all of German tanks, the big lower plate can be its big weak point, and the side armor is pretty trash. So, yes, um, it may have pretty annoying armor if you're coming up against things, but because of the alpha damage and the consistency of its gun, um, people don't typically stand and sit in front of you for very long because you've taken them out way too quickly. Um, but of course, then that leads to the Big Daddy, the genuine Big Daddy, which is the Jag Panzer E100, which is the heavily armored E100 hull slash combination with a giant superstructure that has really, really thick armor and basically no one can pen you through the uh, actual uh, superstructure unless they're firing heat rounds from another Yeguru maybe. Um, but overall, an amazing, an amazing tank. Yes, it does have the Coppola weak point on the top, but that's kind of hard to hit, especially when uh, usually the tanks that are firing at you are lower than you when looking at you. So they'll be looking from this angle, which makes it very difficult indeed to be able to to hit it especially if you're wiggling side to side uh, there's basically no chance of hitting the cupola from lower plate wise gets penned by everything um, so there's always that and of course side armor is terrible as well but um, mobility slow as with um, basically the rest of the tank line from tier 9 onwards the ag tiger loses that speed of the jag panther too um, but yeah i think pretty solid no one really complains about the Jagdpanzer e100 being terrible uh, and that's because it has a 1050 alpha so yeah you punish everything and anything that comes around you especially with a 420 heat jumping all the way back down to tier 5 we start off with the stoig 33b which is the start of the worst tech tree line probably in the game 
bar none. And that is because the Stoic 33B leads on to the uh, Sturm Tiger, which is the 1700 alpha damage tank, the highest alpha damage tank in the game at the moment on World of Tanks console. This could all change if you're watching this in the future, so um, take it with a pinch of salt if you are there. But Essentially, this is the derp line in World of Tanks, and I mean like better than the KV-2 derps, um, and that's because these vehicles all have these ridiculously high uh, kind of <laughs> guns. So you can see here a 15 centimeter uh, on the tier five, which has 350 alpha and can basically one shot everything, but it has basically no penetration unless you fire premium, which you lose the damage. Um, yeah, a weird tech tree line in general. They're not very good, I won't lie. They get penned by everything and anything, but you can pen a few. And then it leads on to the tier six. So you can see the broom bar here, uh, which has, um, uh, well, we can have a look in the actual garage because I've got it, but 660 alpha. Yes, you've got 75 pen, which makes it very difficult to pen anything except light, light tanks, but it has such bad shell velocity uh, that it's actually pretty disgusting. <laughs> Ammo speed, 390 meters a second. That's worse than HE rounds from pretty much every tank in the game, uh, because essentially you are firing HE, basically. Um, yeah, I don't like these tanks at all. They're really, really in inconsistent, and I hate inconsistencies in the game. Um, yeah, I'm sure if you've ever played them, they're really, really fun when you do hit, but you don't hit all too often. Then it leads to the Sturm Panzer, which is the tier seven. This is basically a J Panther II with a derp gun. Um, yes, this thing is pretty good, I think, comparatively. It's probably the best tier for tier tank in the game. Um, for the kind of derp German tank destroyer. Don't get me wrong, don't take that out of context. It's not one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game in general, um, but in terms of the uh, German tank destroyers with the derps, this is probably the best one tier for tier. So 21 centimeter on the fully upgraded version, uh, 740 alpha, 200 pen. You know, you can deal a decent amount of damage with this thing. Um, yeah, in general, I'd think it's basically like playing the Jag Panther 2 so yeah just take that with a pinch of salt obviously hitting things is going to be a pain in the ass then you lead on to the Sturm Tiger P yes the Sturm Tiger P we all know what the Ferdinand and the Tiger P and what I've said already about them it's terrible it's genuinely terrible sacrifices everything speed mobility just armor is just terrible as well you're gonna get penned by everything and yes, you do have a derp gun that can do 950 alpha, but how consistently can you do that? Probably not very. So take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah, I don't like these tanks at all. Then you get the tier nine, the BAR. And the BAR, yes, this is the worst tank tier for tier in the entire game. It has the worst win rate of all tanks in the game at this moment in time. And that's because it has zero degrees of gun depression and I mean oh, one degree of gun depression genuinely one degree this is basically an artillery piece um, that is actually made as a tank destroyer and yes it does have superb alpha damage at 1100 damage with a 30 and a half centimeter mortar L16 gun uh, with amazing penetration but try hitting something that is genuinely just a little bit lower than your gun and you just can't so it's so inflexible it has no armor really everyone pens you basically um, through the lower plate although it's fairly small but yeah no one bothers to go around the corner if you sat there pre-aimed with this thing anyway so it's just terrible it genuinely is so there's always that and it's slow yeah you know the drill it's terrible then it leads on to the worst tier 10 which is the Sturm Tiger and that's because this tank much like the previous line is pretty much the exact same. This thing has a lower plate that everyone can pen with premium ammo. Um, side armor is trash, like actually trash. Um, yes, it does get 1700 alpha with the premium rounds, but they only have 115 pens, so good luck actually penning anything. And even the standard rounds with 280 mil of pen are not enough to go through everything consistently. So yeah, have fun with any 100 coming at you, which will pen you every single time and you can't pen them. So 
yeah, strange way of playing a tank destroyer. But of course, it looks funny. It's an interesting tank. I'm sure it's fun to play and derp with and eventually actually pen something with 1700. But yeah, how consistently can you do that? Not very. And so in general, there you go. Now we drop down to the final tank line in the game, which is the tank destroyers um, or the paper tank destroyers uh, that have the actual traditional guns. And that is the Panzer SFL is where it all kicks off. Um, and the Panzer SFL is a really, really good one. It's kind of, I don't know if people call it the toaster, um, but essentially what the toaster does is it is very, very good. Um, and that's because it has eight, an 8.8 .8 centimeter, also gets this seven and a half centimeter, 220 alpha damage, really, really good reload for a tier six vehicle. Um, I believe it gets five degrees of gun depression, yes. Um, really good aim time, really good accuracy, um, good view range, it's fairly fast as well. It just has everything by the fact of having a turret and of course it doesn't have any armor whatsoever like actually no armor whatsoever so he rounds love this thing um but that's why you stay undetected that's why you use the camo and the concealment of this vehicle to remain undetected and just pummel people and then you move on to the nash horn at tier six which is the um kind of upgraded version has exact exactly the same story with the armor um and the nash horn is basically a better version of the panzer sfl because it gets the 8.8 .8 centimeter with better reload and is just super consistent it has nearly two and a half thousand dpm uh with just base DPM and then increase that with the actual uh, perks and the uh, equipment that you can put on this thing and yeah you're nearly at 3000 DPM in a tier 6 tank destroyer and so it rips apart opponents super quickly decent speed um, sacrifices a little bit over the tier 5 um, but yeah a really really good one if you know how to play glass cannon tank destroyers but if you're new to the game don't go down this line don't just don't it's not a not an easy line to learn um you then lead on to the stura emil which i've done a video on recently so i'm sure some of you have actually seen that if you've made it this far into the video um but yeah this tank i love it it has it has basically ridiculous gun depression. It is the Hoover um, to all intents and purposes. It has 15 degrees of gun depression, one of the highest in the game, if not the highest in the game. Um, and it has 490 alpha with the top gun, really good accuracy, absolutely no armor really, um, unless they hit some weird angle, but yeah, they're not gonna do that. Um, and so yes, you are a stealthy tank destroyer that has huge alpha for the tier, um, and so you have to play it much like that. And of course you can play on ridge lines so well with this vehicle. So yeah, take of that what you will. You then lead on to the Borsig. Actually, we can just back right out and actually look at the Borsig. Now, the Borsig is where it all becomes super, super clear as to what Wargaming want you to play these vehicles like. These are the hidden, the unseen tank destroyers that just rip you apart. And that is where these vehicles come into full effect. You can see here you get a choice of two guns, either 750 alpha damage or 490. Now, there's obviously some differences with DPM and also the penetration and also the accuracy if you go for the higher alpha um, but it's down to you really you can play either way um, it's just I prefer using the smaller gun and then being able to be a hell of a lot more consistent um, obviously the, you then want to put on things like camo net concealment increase your view range and you'll be job to good and um, yeah just an amazing tank um, especially if you know how to play tank destroyers and use vision and view range and spotting mechanics in world of tanks then this is perfect for you um, then it leads on to the waffle panzer 4 which is the tier 9 and the waffle panzer 4 is uh, the tank that leads on to both the waffle e 100 and also the gorilla 15 now the waffle panzer 4 tier for tier is probably worse than the borsig but it's still consistent uh, you get a rear mounted turret which allows you to poke around corners you can be very very uh, well you can utilize this very nicely in game um, so i'd highly recommend you actually try out the waffle panzer 4 in this whole tech tree line because it's so much fun especially once you've got a little bit of experience um, i wouldn't recommend it to new players as i've said before um armor model absolutely none so <laughs> he cannons uh, coming straight at you um but yeah with the top gun the 15 centimeter and the 12.8 you can choose either one the 12.8 top gun gets 560 alpha which is a nice little change um and i really do implore you guys to try it out 
It then leads on to the tier 10, the Waffentrager Alpha E100, which was the demon back in the day. It was disgustingly overpowered because it had 3,300 alpha damage, which meant it could clip every single tank in the game from full health all the way down to zero, including the Maus, which has 3,000 hit points. Um, so yeah, it was just actually ridiculous. And the Intraclip reload was actually decent as well. Um, luckily, Wargaming saw sense and they thought, hmm, we probably shouldn't have a tank that can clip everything in all at once. Um, and so they removed the autoloader, um, or at least some of the shots off of the autoloader. So you only have four shots instead of the six, which means you can still do 2,000 damage or just over 2,000 damage with this vehicle. And so, yeah, in general, um, it's a hell of a lot less useful, and now it's just become basically, because it's got the actual main armament nerf, it ha doesn't have armor, so it doesn't really have anything. It's huge. It's an artillery magnet. It's just terrible. There's no real other way of saying it, because you've lost everything that was special about it, but the one thing that was special about it was that it was broken because... It was broken because it had the alpha damage, but as soon as you remove that, there's nothing to this tank. It genuinely is just a big slab of um, shoot me here points. So yeah, just never really saw the point after it being nerfed of playing it. But there you go. It's definitely better that it has been nerfed. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend anyone really buying this one over the Grill 15, even though the Grill 15 is not particularly great in itself um, because it just... It's... It's a tank destroyer that has really, really amazing accuracy. One of the best accuracies in the game, if not the best accuracy you can see in game. However, it sacrifices literally everything. It doesn't have armor. It's fast, but as soon as you start moving the, the gun, it becomes useless. You can't really be very accurate because of the dispersion, because you have to move. The gun arc is terrible. Yeah, I don't like this tank whatsoever. I wouldn't recommend it to most people. In fact, you'd probably be best stopping at tier 9 and then just ending up the line there because both of the tank destroyers at tier 10 are not particularly great. Um, but there you go. Of course, that's all of the tanks. Let's move on to the worst ones in the game, which are the artillery pieces. Now, down at tier 5, we have the Gorilla. The Gorilla is horrendously OP. Gorilla, disgusting. I hate this thing. It should not be in the game. It has a, I believe, three, well, 700 alpha on the top gun. Yeah, 680 alpha. Uh, and I believe it's actually 750 on the premium or something like that. Um, and it pens everything that it hits. It's devastating for tier sevens, um, which are two tiers higher than it. Everyone complains about high tier artillery, but actually low tier artillery are just as bad, if not worse. Um, and that moves into the Hummel. And that's because the Hummel is actually a pain in the backside of tier 8 tanks all of the time. And that's because it gets the same gun, it reloads so quickly, and it is just a pain. It's just a pain. I absolutely despise the fact that these vehicles are in the game, and I feel horrendously horrible for anyone that's decided to actually play tier 6 and you've come up against Hummels, because they're, they're just disgusting. Um, then it leads on to the GW Panther, which is a tier 7 that has like a thousand and two hundred hit points worth of damage that it can deal um and yeah it's pretty decent and then you go on to the tier 8 which is the gw tiger p which has the tier 10 gun of 2000 alpha a tier 8 so it can one shot every single tier 8 in the game i believe off the top of my head looking at alpha there may be a few tier 8s it can't um but i'm pretty sure it can literally one shot every single tier 8 in the game so that's always fun and balanced uh because yeah why not sit in spawn and take out people but yeah i'm not triggered whatsoever um anyway then moves on to the gw tiger which is the same sort of story it has a tiger hole yeah, nothing too spectacular. It literally has the same gun um, as the tier 8. Just, yeah. And then the GW100, which is a similar sort of story. 2000 Alpha literally just gets armor, this thing, because artillery should be able to bounce a few rounds because it gets the E100 uh, kind of armor. Um, lower plate's terrible. Yeah, I'm just, oh, I despise these things. But there you go. That is every single tank from tier 5 and onwards in the German tech tree line. I appreciate 
you so much if you decided to watch it all. I don't expect very many of you have made it through the entire video, but if you have, thank you very much. And of course, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, if you have any differences in opinion, let me know in the comment section down below as your guys' opinions might be different to mine. And of course, don't take what I've said as a truth, as a complete guide. Make sure you have your own opinions. Maybe you can have a different playstyle to me so some of the other tanks would be better for you. Of course, leave that all in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed and we'll be back with another full tech tree review in a few weeks' time. Goodbye.